Yo, it's your boys, Gentleman Style Podcast Show. We are live here. This is an unprecedented surprise episode. Sorry, guys, we had to do it. It was been burning our minds all week. And we are here to join you guys live on the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. We are going to talk about the benefits. Are there benefits? Is there any benefits to co- going to college versus going to an actual trade school? You won't want to miss one second as we discussed this uh, this topic. Stay with us. Here we go. <laughs> Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Marcus Norman, the Gentleman Style Podcast Show, and we have the boombastic, incredible Jamali Douglas. You guys seen him before in the podcast. He is here today to help me dive into this serious topic. Bro, tell us what you got going on, man. You've been making moves, bro. You've been doing some big things. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, VI's very own, first and foremost. Uh, same difference podcast in the building. Same difference there. Um, you, we've been here before. We've had a couple of talks, me and you, and that intro makes me remember that I need to redo mine. So thanks for that. Right now, what I got going on on the 29th in St. Croix at Levels, at Levels uh, Content Creator Space, we're having a live podcast show, the first, the very first of its kind on the Big Island. It is going to be live. We selling tickets on Eventbrite right now for that. So I'm hustling up, trying to get things together. It's going to be a great panel. There's young, there's married, there's single. There's, you know what I'm saying? There's dating people like Candice Cave, who's been on 100 dates in 100 days. So we're talking love, sex, and dating on that. Um, just did a interview for a local ATL online magazine. I'm excited about that to come out. And you know, working this podcast thing, man. I'm trying. I'm trying to bring a spotlight to the Virgin Islands and the people in it. It's culture. It's art. Not just that we don't walk up. That's what. That's what I'm on right now. Big things popping. Why tell y'all? My brother is killing it. Check them out. Same difference podcast in the VI live. They're gonna be direct. Touching hands, they I feel this is this is my call. I'm calling it from left field, way uh-huh, left field, bro. Uh-huh, I feel uh-huh. y'all gonna be the next tonight's conversation in the VI edition. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm calling. I'm predicting it. That's I'm the that's the goal. Free throw line. That's <laughs> that's the goal. That's what I want it to be. Um, because the VI is so small, I'm sure we're gonna have competition very quickly though. But I'm trying to make us the premier podcast, and I'm saying it. Yeah, I love all of us, and I love what we're doing, but let's not pretend this is not competition. <laughs> let's not pretend we're not trying to be number one out here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So love you guys. Um, I I do a lot of collabs also. with. I'll collab with pretty much anybody in the VI, and I've collabed with people in Columbus, Atlanta, and stuff like that. So I, I show love, but let's not pretend like like we ain't trying to go for number one away. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Best podcast I have ever seen. You guys check them out, Same Difference Podcast. You can find them anywhere, YouTube, Facebook. If you can't find them, I'll link you to them. They are dope, super dope. So It's huge, on TikTok, huge. too, for as long as we got that. <laughs> as long as we got TikTok. Lord have mercy. I heard Canada, I heard Canada got us now. So we might be good. We might we might all get complimentary maple syrup. But I'm sure the algorithm ain't gonna change. <laughs> <laughs> this shit gonna be the same. Be the same mess. Two hundred view we... club. <laughs> oh my god. Two hundred yeah. view club. Yeah, we'll give y'all two fifty. We'll give y'all some two fifty. <laughs> we'll, we'll let you bump up there. But yo, 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 this is dope. So we are here today to discuss, and this happened. This will spark the fire in me, right? Mm-hmm. There was a. a I see it all the time. We see it all the time. Is a lot of people putting up education in the in the dialogue. They're putting up their stats, right? And so in the dating pool, every everybody everybody's infamous question, 
everybody's hated and loved question, what do you bring to the table? So then it comes up and, and people immediately get offensive on one hand, right? And then there's other people on the other hand, hey, Miss Janet, what's up? Love to see it. You are awesome. But everybody on the other side of the fence, they want to they wanna protect and say, you know what? I got a college degree. I got this. I went to this school. I went to, to a, a well-known HBCU university. I went over here. I left my parents' house at this day. I had to figure it all out. And X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. And I look at that in the dating pool. And I really, hey, Miss Tunisia, prosper. Welcome to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. We are talking about, if you're tuning in, we are just talking about what's better. Who's better? College? Going to college? Or a trade or certification first? Where is the real bang for your buck? And so I'm talking about what sparked this fire within me that I really don't care about that. I really don't care where you went to school. I re- as, a, as, a, as a man, um, I don't care where you went to college. That's great that you went to college. And I think even in the workforce, I think people can make it. I can make a very compelling discussion, not argument, but discussion that I don't think it is, is not, it's not what it used to be. I don't think it's highly sought after or needed the way people make it seem. Like I asked a question that about college education and this this woman was like, I don't want to change my name. I don't want to lose my name because my degree from such and such major university, when I get married, I don't want to lose that last name because then I have to update all my certificates from the college and universities that I attended. Mm -hmm lums and parties or fraternities that i sign up she has to update and change all of that so she will not change her last name when she get married okay Okay. that's unique so the discussion around college education keeps coming up it keeps being brought up and it keeps coming up in in the dating pool and i don't think it bears as much weight your thoughts ja from same difference what do you think what what i think i i agree with you that a college degree okay well first let me let me start here before they start throwing tomatoes in um shout outs to anyone that has pursued and even if you've pursued it and did not get your degree shout out to you for doing it because that is a very large commitment of time blood sweat and tears for you it requires a lot of effort energy and these days it requires a lot of money as well so shout out to those that pursued, shout out to those that have attained a college degree. That is a huge achievement. So I, I get that. However, I, I don't think that a college degree holds as much weight as it used to. I'm not referring to the, you know, the sentimental value of it or the connection to the people that you went to college with or the fact that, yeah, you get PhD, you have letters behind your name. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about there used to be a time where, you know, there was a linear path where you go to school, you go to a great college, out of college, you get a great job, you live happily ever after behind your white picket fence with your your nice house, your car, your, your wife, your spouse, whatever, your two and a half kids and your dog, right? That there was an American dream at a time that time is no longer because like wages are not keeping up anymore the cost of college is is exorbitant these days and a large percentage to me a large percentage of americans hold student loan debt and that debt is really an anchor to them so i don't think it holds as much weight as it used to because you could live comfortably having that degree and then getting that job. And there used to be such a thing as pensions where hardly any company does that anymore and retirements. So now it's a 401k. That's a whole nother story. But that that's where I stand on it. I don't think it holds as much weight. So I agree with you. I, I, and and thank you for breaking that down. That's that's huge and that's major. And and Tunisia Prosper brings up the the subject. In this day and age, you have to have experience. A degree doesn't pay in a manner it used to. And that's true. And and for for those of you watching, I know my answer, right? 
Well, for those of you watching, what what would you want, right? You got you got you got cancer, you got cancer, um, on the brain. So your surgeon, you you go into his office, you sit on it. He got all the plaques on the wall, right? He went mm -hmm. to this prestigious alum, and he got over here, and he got a certificate from the president showing that he graduated with honors and all of this stuff. But he only has five years in the practice of removing mm -hmm. cancer from the brain. But then you got Joe Blow over here to get a second opinion, because that's that's what you should do if you get diagnosed with cancer. And Joe Blow over here, you know, he went to a decent college, a decent university to get his medical his medical license and, and, and doctorate to practice uh, surgery, brain surgery. But he's been doing it for 30 years. Who do you want who do you want working on your brain, right? The prestigious alum that has certificates, a whole wall dedicated to all the certificates and, and college degrees? Or do you want the guy that has a high, higher success rate? That's my opinion. He has a higher success rate because he's done this for years. Do, do you really care what certificate or where he went to school? That's my question. I, I, I think... It gets confusing trying to weigh experience, degrees, and all of that stuff because, for one, a degree doesn't necessarily transfer. For instance, I don't want to get into the immigrant conversation, but for instance, I come from another country. I was a practicing doctor. I was at the top of my field. I come here from, you know, and get my, my naturalization or whatever, my green card or whatnot. I've been practicing for years. I have experience in this thing. I could still end up sweeping floors somewhere. You get what I'm saying? Just because it doesn't just transfer like that. So there, I have a degree. I have experience. So so how do we measure the stuff? I guess there's some sort of, of way that you personally, if somebody's going to operate on your brain, you have to make a decision for yourself, gauging based on that. But again, there's no real system to measure it because if you go to one job they might be looking for more experience over here over here they might just want that degree showing that you're capable of doing it because on the jobs experience is what counts so i i i don't know how that works especially if you're looking for five to ten years experience from a college student that just graduated so this this made it that, that's huge. This made big news, I think, like a year or two ago. There was like a couple that and just like you, I don't want to really dig deep into the, the immigration stuff. But there was there was a, a couple college uh, college courses or small time colleges. I think they were in Florida. It made the news because what they were doing is you had a lot of, of practicing professionals coming over from Africa. Right. A lot of nurses, a lot of doctors in Africa, and they were immigrating, just like you said, to get naturalized in the United States. And so they come over here and they've been practicing for years. They did it, been doing it, been about it. And as a kind of a scapegoat to get into the field quicker, they had to they had to go to a school and get um, transferred over and, and graduate from one of our schools. And so this 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 company, uh, several colleges, actually had kind of just hey come here we'll sign off on all your stuff you take the 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 board certification or the 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 the, the universal certification and you pass it and now you can go practice without really actually going to school here and they got busted it made big news and a lot of those professionals were sought they were hunted down to find out where are they working now you know because these fake schools these fake colleges allow them to kind of sneak in the back door so that they could kind of go straight into the workforce so they could make money and provide. So that was a hiccup. What? That was a Were hiccup. Were they in the wrong? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I don't, I would, again, if you, again, I want experience. I want to know have, how many times have you performed this surgery successfully? Right. But if you're telling me, you know, it's it's theory. You know, I studied this. I, I passed top of my class. I don't really care. We're talking about my brain. 
I don't care if you graduated top of your class. I don't care if you 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 wrote the best, you know, doctorate letter or or essay to graduate. I don't really care. How many times have you removed chunks of brain matter from someone's skull successfully and they not die? Where is that? I want your your track record. And if you don't have none or you or you you know, you did it once or twice, I I might skip you. I'm I'm high, I'm very likely to skip you. And so if those people my my thing is if those those people who came to the United States and came here and they were doing the job because a lot of them had actually already made it and graduated from the school and they were already out practicing. So, yes, you can arrest them, but did anybody get hurt? Did you die? That's the real question. Did you die? Exactly. <laughs> I, they would have known about them had somebody got hurt. So it, it begs the question, were they doing the job they were supposed to be doing? Did they have that experience and was it working? Because it, it wouldn't be hard to find if there was a, a long list of, of deaths or, or incidents, right? You would have known where they were expeditiously. Immediately. But they had already been in the workforce, been practicing. They had got accepted, got a job in, in some hospital, in some clinic, working, drawing blood successfully, taking yeah. blood successfully, working. So why, I, I, again, why stop them? Especially if they can pass the state test. They met the requirement legally. They just don't have the certificate in the U.S. But, but that's another thing. For years. If the test, right? that you take to be board certified is sufficient to prove that I am good enough to do this job, right? Then what's the problem? If I, if it truly is a good enough test to measure my experience and my skills, then I should be able to walk in, take the test and then start. Especially if I can show that, hey, I came from here and I used to do this for this amount of years. Okay, so you so you feel the experience. Now take the test, right? Am, am I wrong here? Isn't that what the test is supposed to prove? That I can do the job? I feel you. you're right. You're right. So the question, the question is, if you know how to do the job and pass a standardized test, should you continue should you be allowed to work and should you be required to have to prove? your knowledge by going to school. It's like clep. I look at it like clepping, right? When you were in school and you could clep English, you could clep certain things because you knew exactly. your child had an advanced understanding of the subject. Why why put me through that rigmarole? Like it's crazy when when colleges transfer and they're like they require you to take this course again. I took it over here. Let me just clep it. Let me just take the test and get out of this so I can prove that I know what I'm talking about. So, I'm with you. I want to talk on the money side of things. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, you know, because there's that other debate. Is, is it worth it? Which one is better? Is it worth it to go to college first and get your degree, get your advanced certification, get your degree in whatever subject? Or is it better to go get a trade? Um, mechanics, cosmetology, barbering, um, woodworking, wood shop. Um, architecture, those accounting, right? Which one is better monetarily? And so I'm going to read off here some some stats brought to you by uh, bankrate.com. These stats are coming from bankrate.com. And it says, even though getting a college degree is expensive, the economic returns are worth it. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, bachelor's degree holders earn about 68% more on a weekly basis than those with just a high school diploma. And that gap only widens with time. A report from Georgetown Center on Education and Workforce found that those with a bachelor's degree earn a median of 75% more throughout their careers than high school graduates. And so... My big bro, you got some stats. Can you read off the stats, those numbers for us, um, at what people are averaging with college degrees per 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 college level? Okay, so for the average college graduate, they make between fifty two thousand to fifty eight thousand. Of course, you're talking about in America, and uh, according to Zip Recruiter, the average trade school grad they make about the same 
but on the the average side it's about 52,000 on the high side it's about 84,000 and their schools go about 2 to 4 years as well they could be up to 2 to 4 years but those are like apprenticeships and journeyman stuff so they they take the schooling it's focused on what you what trade you're going for and you get the experience and it's it's only in that as opposed to college where two out of your four years if you go for a bachelor's it's it's general stuff you know english maths and stuff two of those years are gonna go towards that i feel so so you're saying we, we make about the same amount whether you go to college or based off of those those statistics it's, it's saying that whether you go to college or whether i go to trade i'm gonna make the same amount roughly about the same amount depending on the trade that you choose because um if you go for like plumbing or something like that they they start off higher and of course if you go into like auto mechanics or something like that it depends on where you go with it mm. Mm. and then let's not forget some of those schools actually pay you some of those trade schools pay you so that's different because college definitely does not pay you Unless you're you're a GI Bill recipient, like uh, some of us, <laughs> like some of us out here with lost limbs and lost fingers and digits and PTSD. Oh, oh, you talking about me? I'm sorry. Um, so you're right. I, I'm reading from Job Corps, the Job Corps website. They give you free housing at Job Corps. Your focus should be on your studies and training. This is off of the Job Corps website official. Let us handle the rest, from housing to meals to training gear. Job Corps has you covered all for free free housing nutritious meal basic medical care and a living allowance that i don't know about you and i don't know um miss tunisia it depends on the person so can you give us a little bit more on what you mean um but that's enticing you telling me i could go to job co and pick up a trade skill and you gonna pay me you gonna give yeah. me money you gonna feed me Th those mm -hmm. are the big ticket items right there Right. And, and, and again, someone can make an argument on the other side of the fence, but that's, that's huge. Right. That's a huge weight as a parent. That's a huge weight off your shoulders that you ain't got or, or mm -hmm. the military. You can always send them to the military. <laughs> They're going to do that too. <laughs> so they're going to they give you three hats and a cot for sure. <laughs> and everything in between. So let's go. We, we got mm -hmm. some clips. We got some clips we want to share with y'all. Check this out. So here's here's one side of the How pendulum. How much money can you make going to college compared to going to the trades? Well, in the first five years, when you go to college, you're going to accrue debt, probably somewhere between one hundred and two hundred thousand dollars. When you join the trades over that first five years, you're going to make about three hundred thousand dollars and not owe anybody anything. Where would you rather start in your career? A hundred thousand in debt or two to three hundred thousand dollars to the positive. Well, I'll take the positive every day. Brought to you by the letter Q and <laughs> and that man. That's, must that's a tough decision. That's a really hard decision. And and again, it comes up, it comes up when we talk about it's especially comes up when it comes to dating because people want to throw out that accolades, right? They want to throw out that degree. Mm -hmm. They want to throw out that certification. They want to throw out that license as if you, they, they, you know, they did the work, right? They did the hard work, yes. but I'm not really, I'm not really feeling that. You, that means you got debt. And so I guess the, 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 the deciding factor is the debt, the money, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because if I could go get food, clothing, money, all of that, and you're going to put money in my pocket and I'm going to come out with a cert certification where I could start work right away because I don't need, I don't think, I don't even feel like I need to go. Do I need to go to culinary school for five years to really be a good chef or I just need to get the basics and then I could, I could do this on my own. Let's, let's be honest, man. Most, most of the experience and most of what you're going to gain that will carry you through your career, any career, whether it's a trade journalism or whatever is on the ground on the job experience is the most important part of any career path 
because you can go over theory and whatever you want to in, in school, but until you get there and you see everything for yourself, it it really is just, it's a teaser. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they give you a very core base groundwork to start on, but then when you see what it is, that's when things really come together and click for you. So with that said, which one would you prefer? Because with a trade school, you you are out into your career. You could be working already while you're in this in the program, a journeyman or an apprenticeship program. And you can also start within two years. You're already in, you have, depending on the trade that you pick, you can be out there making money because that's what the college is for. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some people that need that time to kind of find themselves. You get what I'm saying? To kind of figure out what it is they want to do because you're still young and that's okay. However, in between that time where you're trying to find yourself, you're also going to have to find the money to pay for college. That's that's the hard part. That's the hard part, paying for college. That's the real sauce, and that's the real heartache for a lot of parents. Um, we recently did an interview here. Well, not recently. Uh, we did an interview on this podcast where a gentleman, he has a television show, and his television show is dedicated to helping parents and young adults and young teenagers um, scope out the college, the various colleges that they want to attend without having to travel to the actual physical college campus and do a site tour. And so it's called the college tour. And what he does is he travels, he and his team travel to each individual co college campus across the country and they do the tour for you. They interview um, faculty, but more importantly, they interview students in the various degrees that that college specializes in. It's called a college tour. So it's the cost, right? Shows like that come up because it's a burden. Imagine having to physically have a child tell you, mom, dad, I want to go to these three colleges, but I don't know. Okay, well, we got to scrounge up the money. We got to get on this airplane. We're going to spend a time in a hotel over here. We're going to spend time over here on this college campus to view their, their stuff. If the college doesn't provide that for you, I don't even know if colleges provide that for you or if they house you to, to do that tour. So all of that is Most out of pocket. <laughs> wow. Most of that. So that's out of pocket. That's out of pocket for me to, and then I still got to cough up money or sign, you know, help my child with grants and, and, and scholarships to help pay for the darn thing. And so that's, that's, I think that's where it boils down to cost. Whereas I can, I can go to a trade and start sooner and, and without the debt. Let's talk about the debt. The national debt right now, today, 2024, the year of our Lord, <laughs> $34 trillion. Wow. This is on the, what is the national debt today? Um, PG, it's a Peter and G Peterson Foundation. So they track the national debt crisis. And to break that number down even further, they give you detail on how much that is per every single person in America. So that averages to about $102,000 per person in the United States. That That's how much you, I, me, owe, even though we've never went to college. So that's how much we have to contribute as a whole in order to pay that number off. And it's, oh, it's whom? <laughs> the Decepticons? <laughs> who, who do we owe? <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> I, and to piggyback off of that, for the national average, which is a part of the, the national debt also, the national average for student loan debt is about $35,000, according to Forbes. So that comes out to about 13% of Americans or roughly 43 million people. 43 million people. All right. So when you talk about that, think about that. 43 million of us are carrying a monkey on our back right now. That's that's wild. That's wild. That's wild. That's wild. That's wild. 
Speaking of debt, we got to pay some bills, y'all. We'll be right back. We got to go to a quick commercial break. We got to show some love to our show sponsors. The show sponsor, Gentleman Style Podcast, are brought to you by... Support for Gentleman Style Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers you precision engineering tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right. The 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off free worldwide shipping with the code GENSTYLE at manscaped.com. the gentleman style podcast show we are here live talking about which is better college classes going to college sending your child to college or picking up a trade if you if you missed anything that we talked about earlier you can catch the replay on iHeartRadio, apple itunes spotify linkedin facebook youtube um ghana ghana business page wherever you get your podcast today we are everywhere we are even on audible so you can listen mm. to us with alongside your favorite book. So check us out. This is dope. This is dope. Bro, we, we got another clip on another. Mm. This is coming from a wife. And she's talking about, and, and this this hits home for me because I'll never forget um <laughs> talking to my, my stepmom. And she was like, because both my parents were are educators, they're in the education system back home. And my mom, I was talking to her, and I was like, she was telling me. You know, again, the, we, we somehow got into topics of degrees and college education. And I think she has like a bachelor's and a master's. And then I said, really, you have a, a bachelor's? And I said, I wonder what dad has. And she was like, your father has two master's degrees. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm like, that was that was vicious. That was a little hostile. Yeah. But, you know, it's all love. It's it's one house. We all love. So so we got two master's degrees and you know i just kept it pushing from there to alleviate the awkwardness of the conversation <laughs> but it's powerful and so here's a wife talking about and and i think this is going to be my situation too where you have a partner who's highly educated and then you have a partner that's like a, a, a tradesman a skillsman he has a craft he has he knows some stuff so here we go okay here. i'm gonna let y'all in on like something that I feel like is really under talked about and it should be talked about more because I would have never known this. So everyone pushes college, college, college. And I went to college. I have a master's degree. I make very good money for my age. My husband did not go to college and I've talked about this on here before. And I don't think you understand. I don't think you understand it. So I'm going to throw it into perspective for you. And I say it not to brag, but to hopefully help, help any of you. I have a college degree. He has a high school diploma. He went to trade school right after high school. He got his certificates and everything. And here we go. So this past July, he had already brought home, brought home more than my gross salary this year. Come December, he will have quadrupled my salary, quadrupled it. If he decides to pick up overtime on a weekend, a two day weekend, if he picks up overtime, he brings home that weekend, just in those two days, more than I make in a two week check. I have a master's degree. He has a high school diploma. So that reason right there is why I will not push college on anyone. If you think that college is not for you and you want to try a trade school, obviously look into it. See if you think that you have what it takes and then 100% do it, do it. I don't think that enough people are talking about this and it is 100% worth it. If you stick with it, he's been doing it. There you go. There you go. I I can't hear you. Let me ask something. Let yeah, me ask something. yeah. Real quick. Uh, first of all, the fact that she has a master's degree and says under talked about made my ass itch. But um, <laughs> why do you think trade school is not pushed? Well, I, I have an idea of why it isn't pushed, but why wouldn't it be pushed? Because 
for one, once you learn a trade, you have a skill, a skill that can pay you for life. If I go to school and I get an art degree, there's a good chance that I might not be getting paid for the rest of my life on that alone. You get what I'm saying? But if I'm a, a plumber, a carpenter or something like that, that's something that, you know, it, it can turn into a business quite easily. But me being a, a librarian, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can only do that thing at libraries as long as libraries last. You get what I'm saying? So why do you think they're not pushed? I think they're not pushed because we're stuck in time, right? This is this is my tonight's conversation um, voice. So I <laughs> I love that that show. Um, I think that we we are stuck in time off of an age old tradition of similar to work a job for thirty years, stay without employer for thirty years, get your four hundred one k, get your good benefits, get your pension. Get your get get everything you can, but but show loyalty to that employer. That is still being pushed today, and so along with that comes the, the stipulation of go to college, get a good degree, get an advanced degree, go go more, get a master's degree, and so forth and so forth. And the agenda keeps getting pushed because we're we're living in the past, in the age of influencers where you don't need a degree to make six figures you don't need you don't you you need a good book and a good mentor and you you do need to pay for education but education and mentorship i think can be just as valuable and so those are my two points i think we are living in the past uh, well my second point let me make the second point we also have been as i can only speak for the black community because i am an african american man um, we college attending major universities and, and achieving high degrees is, is, is not, is for, is still fairly new to us, especially women, women weren't allowed, even, even after the, the quote unquote signing of, of equal, equal rights, women weren't allowed or viewed or accepted to go to college much, much later on. And so I, that is why I think it stems where women definitely push going to college because before then it, it was it was taboo. A, wo a woman was con who had a college education was considered taboo. And so for those two reasons, I feel why it's still being pushed today that we we need to push our kids to go to the best colleges. And you know, no matter what the cost, no matter what the student debt number is you know, send your kids to college so they can do well in life. I don't, that's no longer true. I think it's important that we um, also acknowledge, because if I'm not mistaken, it's Women's History Month, isn't it? It is Women's History Month. March I think, I think it's Women's important. History Month. I think it's important that we acknowledge that uh, with what you just said, that Black women, African-American women, however you identify, are the most educated women of any race period so shout out to them uh we love you what a ladies man I, <laughs> you, you know you know i always got my voice on but um yeah so i just want to acknowledge that first so kudos to that i i think that we've we've knocked a lot on college but i think maybe we should go over some of the pros what do you think Mr. Gentleman, what do, you, what do you think? I agree. So I will say this. Um, I intend to be the type of parent that pushes more for a trade. Um, because again, no student loan debt. So so let me let me be clear. I wanna I wanna be very transparent on this episode. I have no intention, no desire whatsoever to co-sign for anybody's student loan debt. Um, if you want to go to college, we are going to pay cash. I have absolutely no desire, 1000% no desire to pay and co-sign for any student loan debt. I myself do not have any student loan debt. Um, and I am working and I, I make 
a little bit above average more than the average man my age. And I don't have a college um, certification. I've gone to college and I have experience and I have time in the pond of college, but I don't have any major <laughs> certificates or certifications. I have a lot. I have a lot of experience. Um, that being said. And so I don't intend to push my children towards college unless um, and I and this is an Asian gentleman. And it also comes from a book. Um, it was a book I bought about Asian culture. And so in Asian culture, they do not force their children to go to college or pay for college unless they're going to be taking um, something in along the lines of a STEM program. So science, technology, education, or math. And I actually saw this live with one of my friends who's Asian, who's from, um, he's, he's Asian, and his wife is Caucasian. And they're my really good friends. And he has three boys who are all engineers. All three boys are college graduates with a, a, a master's in engineering. And so, and that was the deal that he made with his children. He said, I will only pay for college if you get a degree in something related to STEM. That was it. So anything outside of that, artsy, you mentioned art earlier. If you want to go get an art degree, I'm not paying for that. You want to go get a degree in basket weaving? I'm not paying for that. You want to get a degree in something that has a high propensity to pay you, pay you well, and even, even despite the college debt, I'll pay for that. And that was his deal. And that's, that's, that's propagated throughout all a lot of Asian culture. But I have no intentions of, of pushing my child to a college degree, towards a college degree. I'm going to push for a trade. We need tradesmen. We need skilled laborers. We need experts. We need professionals. Um, there is a shortage. Most people don't know this. There is a national shortage of, of home inspectors. There is not a lot of home inspectors left. The person that did the home inspection on my last house, my last property, the guy was 70 years old. And he and he's still doing the profession because they they need him, right? He yeah. had different mortgage companies. He has they have different bank companies contacting him because they need to get these home inspections done. He's seventy years old, and he can't. And he he ha, he hires his nephew to go into crawl spaces and climb on the roof and climb in the, in people's attic because he can no longer do it. But they're paying him well. We do. Not, we have a shortage of home inspectors and home appraisers because no one's going to school in that trade anymore. So, did I answer your question, Big Bro? I I don't think so because I forgot what the question was. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I know I was looking into the home inspection thing, and I I know that at least two fifty per home and up. You know what I'm saying? Like so. Correct. I I agree. As far as me as a parent, um, the only thing I will be pushing is to go to a HBCU because they are underfunded, right? And they exist for a reason. Not going to go into the reason because you can look it up for yourself and I don't want to start no debates on somebody else's podcast. But um, do it. That's the only <laughs> thing I'm going to push, right? Go to an HBCU and also... I recognize that not every child is meant to go to college. School is not for everyone. I have one that wants to be an environmental scientist, another one that wants to be a assassin slash model slash real estate agent. So all of those things can pay very well, um, but I'm not, I, I'm not keen on wasting money sending them to something that they're not interested in. So I do take into account what it is they want to do and which is most likely for them to pursue long-term. That's important for me. And for them to be doing something that's fulfilling. Uh, money, money can be a major issue. However, as long as they're making enough to live comfortably and they're not coming to daddy or to mommy or whatever, every, you know, every month, 
as long as they're not still dependent upon us, but they live outside of the house and you know what I'm saying? As long as they're not struggling, they're comfortable. I'm cool with them making enough money just to live comfortably and do what they want. I, I don't feel like they have to make six figures or whatever like that. I want them to do something fulfilling because I understand that working a job that you do not like is hell. And that, that's pretty much my stance on it, man. You, you could be a garbage collector, which some of them make very good money. As long as you're, it's a fulfilling job for you. It's something that you want to do. If you want to own your own business, we could work towards that also. So, so let me get it straight. I want, I want to clear it up here. You will help as long. So you will help pay for something as long as the outcome is financially beneficial for them. Yeah, like like you said, right? I'm not I'm not paying for no clay molding school. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not doing that. But if you want to pursue, if your thing right now, if what you're into is let let's say they they decide they want to do social media, right? Social media is a money getter right now. Okay, cool. Let's find the courses or whatever that is the least expensive and something that you you need. Let's go ahead and pick and choose and find something we could do that for you. Cause you don't want to do the four year. Okay, what's your what's your plan? What's your goal then? Cause we we need to have those conversations also. It long past are the times of you gonna do this, 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 and this. I don't I don't believe in that because children will they even if they do listen to you, chances are they will either be unfulfilled or they'll stop later on and you wasted your money anyway. You can't live your life through your children. Yeah, you have to be a doctor. You have to be a lawyer because, you know, the family needs a lawyer. Or all your parents are doctors. Where Your mom, your dad, your uncle, your cousin, they're all doctors. So you got to keep it going. And you got to go to to the, the alum that we went to um, to keep that going, too. Like, nah, like so. So let me let me let me push back a little bit. Your child wants to be a content creator. Mom, dad. Um, I want to be a content creator. I want to be a social media influencer. I got about 10,000 followers over here on TikTok or X or whatever it's called or OnlyFans. I want to be a content creator. Would you, but your child poses the question to you now. They want to go to a film production school to help them hone their craft in media editing and, and editing and shooting film and shooting short films and production and music quality and all of that. So there's college in there, but it's towards the goal of being a content creator that doesn't necessarily require a degree or certification. It just requires time in the pond. Are you paying for that? Okay. Um, it, the conversation can be had. What's the cost? How long is it? You know what I'm saying? Do they assist you after or through it? You get what I'm saying? And also, is there a way that we can incorporate this maybe into college to where this is a minor? Maybe we could look into that also. You get what I'm saying? So you come up with two things instead of one and you put all your eggs in one basket. There, there's options, but you got to compromise and kind of work it. Like you, you will get what you want. Sure. Sure. I'm going to support your YouTube career. However, is there also something else that like you could get on the side with it? Maybe we could add in there. Yeah. Whoa, CJ. We ain't we ain't talking about OnlyFans or who we talking about. <laughs> I think that's exactly what she's talking about. I think that's exactly what CJ is talking about. She's talking about that platform. That platform. So they yeah. wouldn't come to me with that. <laughs> they going, but they going to mommy, mom, mom. You, <laughs> can you can you get dad to help us pay? We want uh, <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Nah, Woo. that that's one thing. Yeah, we don't even need a discussion on that one. Don't bring that one to me. That is, that is a huge discussion, and that's a discussion I am mentally preparing for it to have. The, the, and 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 I, I'm not gonna be heartbroken, but I could see my wife being heartbroken that um, our child or children don't want to don't want to go they may not want to go to college because they looking they're they're going to be looking at at you right they're going to be looking at dad same difference podcast tour bus traveling all over the country interviewing 
VI Caribbean talent. You got Pumper on next week. You got Big Daddy Friday next week. You got this. You, you're traveling. You're getting booked. And then they see Mommy with the high degrees and the certifications. And, you know, she's she's doing well. And so the kids are literally looking at which direction to go. So I know that's going to be a very hard um, pull on the heartstrings because I, I I don't want student loan debt. I don't want it. That's the thing. I don't think that's a hard conversation. Which way do you want? What do you want? Without looking at anyone else, what is it that you want to do? It shouldn't be a hard... Why should my heart be broken that they don't want to go to college? So you don't want to spend 30000 a year of my money? Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, that's fine. That's, that's fine. What is it that you want to do? Is this something that you're passionate about? That I, I care about that because a lot of the times you might say you're going to be a doctor. Do you want a doctor that does not want to be a doctor? No. Think about that. Do you want to go to the ER and the first person you see is someone that does not want to work in the ER? Yeah. Why'd you wake not me, me up? Now I had to call. You wake me up for this patient? Ah, That's God. what I'm saying. Is that what you want? You go to the ER, your heart palpitating, and then this person dragging their feet coming. Ah, oh, oh, he fine. That's not who you want, right? Yeah, he's getting paid well, but is he fulfilled in his job? Yeah, it is possible, people, to make a lot of money and not be fulfilled. Because we don't talk about that. And be miserable. Yeah. What do your children want? That's what I'm hearing. That's the consistent theme I'm hearing. What do your kids want to become? What do they desire? What's their heart? And, you know, again, I'm, I'm not going to sway my children in any direction. They're gonna see me, the 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 influencer, the the guy, the entrepreneur. I don't believe you though. What? I I call cap. I don't believe you. You don't think I'm? A <laughs> you ain't going You you're not gonna try to to influence them, influencer. You don't think so? I'm I'm gonna bring them with me, right? I'm gonna take them with me. They're gonna be at all the business meetings and all the business functions and the 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 mm. podcast. They'll do a guest appearance. You know the willow, oh, okay. the willow, the willow right, right. push. But that's that's not me push. I'm just it's just bring your your child to work day. That's all. <laughs> that's okay. all. And then when okay. mommy is going to work, and 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 mommy is going to work, they're gonna have an opportunity to go with mommy to work and see how how mommy you know, earns a living and what fulfills mommy or doesn't fulfill mommy, um, <laughs> um, you know, but Hey, for real, for real, it's better to love what you do. Love what you do, it is. but it it's hot, but it's hard and it's challenging to do what you love and get paid well for it. Those things don't always line up. What? Well, okay. Can we establish what paid well is first? What, what does that mean to you? Enough money to to thrive. Enough money coming in so you're not destitute at the next pandemic. You have an income that you will get no matter what. And that doesn't necessarily mean a six-figure amount. Because if your bills are low and your cost of living is low, then you don't need a lot of money to live. You just need enough to cover it. And so if living well to me means... Do you have enough to pay your bills? Do you have enough to travel to your heart's content? Do you have enough to money to stash away and save and invest in other things and, and make a difference in the world? Do you have enough money to give and help others and lift other people up and support the things that speak to your heart and give back? Those are, That's what I mean, living well. That's, that's fair. That's, that's fair. The way that I see it is because um, I learned a couple of years ago about not putting my values on others. And success is actually a value. What you determine to be success is a value that you've honed and you have an image of it in your mind. So for me to say living well, I can't put that on my children because I have an idea of what living well is. Uh, a monk, 
that trains all day and eats rice three meals a day and prays and they have an idea of what living well is. It's vastly different from mine, I'm sure. So I try not to put any of those things on anyone else. I try my best not to because my values are my own and my idea of success is my own. So I want for them to be comfortable. I want for them to live in a way that they're comfortable and they are not having to ask for anything. Because like you said, some people, they don't want a lot of things. They don't need a lot of things. To some people living well means I could travel once a month to Tibet or to the Philippines or to Dubai. To some people living well means I pay all my bills, I'm fed, I have all my bills are paid, I ain't got no car insurance, nobody's asking me for nothing, I chill and I can play video games. That I want for their definition of, of live, living well to have come to fruition, if that makes sense. That does make sense. That's huge. That's huge. Big facts. Spilling tea and nuggets all episodes. Yeah, man, my child could be a monk, but let that let that joker be a Republican. We're going to have some words. We're going to have some fighting words. <laughs> let a motherfucker be Republican. You see, yeah, oh, man. <laughs> so they can't be a conservative? A conservative? No, no, no. We're going to fight. We're going to fight. Um... This is huge. This is huge. I, I love this episode, man. Big bro, um, give some shout outs. You got a lot of things going on. Shout some people out. What what are you happy of today? What what makes you what makes you smile? We're talking uh, about doing what I'm, you love. For for doing doing this podcasting thing has brought a lot of joy to me. And it has not brought a lot of money. <laughs> right if i'm honest it has not brought a lot of money but when you see me doing my thing the smile that you see it's real and i feel like at this age i've actually found something that brings me joy and it makes a difference in in the rest of my life for real for real you get what i'm saying it's not the only thing that brings me joy but talking about you know whether you went to school or not i went to school i tried the college thing i do have a degree and I am not doing what I have a degree in. <laughs> so, but this thing, I've quit many a job because for some reason, they just don't connect with me and what I find fulfilling. What I find fulfilling is talking to people, um, providing experiences, um, helping people. And honestly, being at a job for most of my days does not allow me to do that. But this does. I could connect to people in a way that if you saw my DMs and talking to people that I don't know and they just go ahead and tell me, hey, I'm struggling with this PTSD and this, you know what I'm saying? And I could talk them through that. I can't do that at my regular job because most of them are crazy. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So I'm happy to be able to find, even at this older age of mine, a purpose and to live in that and to see it grow. That's what I'm happy for. That's so dope. So dope. I love that. Love that. We are out of time. <laughs> we are out of time. Gentleman style podcast show. We got to let you guys go. We got to let same difference. He's on the move. Shout out. Shout out next week or next couple weeks. The end of the end of this month. He will be in St. Croix, same difference, in the VI, representing, check them out. They're going to be doing big things, super, super dope. We can't hear you, Ja. You go, muted. Go to the event, right? Same difference, my friends. March 29th, St. Croix, Levels. <laughs> Get your tickets now, all right? St. Croix, Levels, March 29th, same difference, and friends, live podcast show. We have a question and answer period. There'll be games, there'll be giveaways, there'll be meet and greet of all of the panel. And the panel, we are beautiful. Beautiful, handsome, beautiful people. Come meet us. That's it, sir. Sip it up, sip it up. Thank you all for joining this episode. This has been an impactful episode. I hope it helps. I hope it gives some insight, some statistics, some, some data, so you can live your best life. And that's all I got to say. Love you guys. Like we end every show. Take care of your friends. Take care of your family. And always, always.
take care of business. This is your favorite gentleman, Marcus and Ja from Same Difference Podcast, signing off. We love you guys. Bye.